Hello everyone, this is Vineet and you're watching XPS Tech. And it's April and you know it's the time of the year when a new version of Ubuntu gets released. But this year, the release is a bit special. One, because it's an LTS release, that means you get updates for next 5 years till 2023 in this case. Ubuntu releases LTS version every alternate year. Second, it's the first release with no Unity desktop. Unity has been the primary desktop of Ubuntu for past 8 years. But last year, Ubuntu team announced that it is giving up on Unity desktop and adopting the popular GNOME desktop environment. So the most popular Linux distribution meets the most widely used desktop environment, a combination that should benefit both as well as the end users. So in today's video, we'll check out Ubuntu's latest release, 18.4, called Bionic Beaver which is just released on 26th of April 2018. Alright, so let's begin. Let's start with the installation first. For fresh installation, you can download the image from Ubuntu's website. The size of the installation image is around 1.8 GB. And also from this version onwards, Ubuntu has stopped supporting 32-bit systems. So you won't find 32-bit installation image. The system requirement that you need to install Ubuntu 18.4 is 2 GHz of dual core processor, 2 GB of RAM and 25 GB of free hard disk. Now the installation process is quite simple and familiar if you have ever installed an Ubuntu system before. But this time you get a new option called minimal installation. This option if selected will install only the core Ubuntu system with minimum applications like web browser and few basic utilities. People who wants to build a system as per their requirement and do not need the entire set of default application will appreciate this option. Rest of the installation process is pretty much the same as that of previous versions. Now if you are already running Ubuntu 17.10 or 16.4 LTS version, you can upgrade your system by following this simple process. However, a few hours before I started recording this video, they have updated this page and now you get this message which essentially says that you need to wait till late July to upgrade your system. So if you cannot do a fresh installation, you have to wait for a while. Alright, after installation on the first boot, you are greeted with this what's new in Ubuntu screen, which gives you an option to set up live patch, which is a new feature in Ubuntu 18.4 that essentially applies critical kernel security fixes without rebooting the system. This is extremely helpful in large organization critical businesses running Ubuntu operating system where rebooting the system means downtime of services, which is kind of a pain. So this service is available on subscription, but it's free for users up to three machines, but you need to have an Ubuntu one account. So if you're not interested, you can skip this step. Next screen, ask your permission to send system information error logs to Canonical for improving their services. And that's about it. All right, now you're all set. So this is now the default desktop of Ubuntu, which is based on GNOME 3.28.1. This version 3.28 was released by GNOME last month. So it's nice that Ubuntu has included this in 18.4. And also I have made a dedicated video on what's new in GNOME 3.28 a few days back. So if you haven't checked it, I highly recommend you watch that video. You can watch it by clicking at the top right corner of the screen. The link is also available in the description of this video. Alright, for those who is looking at the GNOME desktop screen for the first time, GNOME desktop has a top bar at the top with activities menu on the left corner, clock with notification and calendar in the center, and system tray with usual network, volume and power on off button on the right corner. Ubuntu desktop also has this sidebar or panel on the left side containing your favorite application. This you can move to the bottom or right side of the screen from settings app. However, this panel is not there in the vanilla or pure GNOME desktop. At the bottom end of this panel is the application icon, which displays frequently used application and also all the installed applications. The activities menu is like a dashboard that displays all the open windows in the center with workspaces in the right side. Now, although this is GNOME 3.28 desktop, but not all the GNOME apps are updated to the current version. The file manager is still at version 3.26. So the new star feature that allows you to mark important files in folder as favorite is not available here. However, the file manager here has these little icons on the left side of the sidebar for each folder. Also, unlike GNOME 3.28 where option for desktop icons 
has been removed. Here the desktop icons are still available which you can turn on and off from the GNOME Tweak Tool app. However, the GNOME Tweak Tool is not installed by default. So you need to first install it via the Ubuntu software app. But the terminal, Ubuntu software app and calendar app all has been updated to version 3.28. The office suite here is the LibreOffice suite, which has also been updated to the latest version. And at last, the Ubuntu's potential future theme, community theme is now available in the stable repo and can be installed via Snap. This has not been finished yet and that is why it has not been adopted in this release. But if you want to get a sneak peek, you can install the theme by running this command sudo snap install community theme. And once it's done, reboot the system and select community theme from the cog at the login screen. So this is the new, potentially the future theme of Ubuntu which is a bit darker and colors are a bit vibrant and I think it looks really cool. Alright, so that was all for today's video. What's your view on the new release and Ubuntu's new GNOME desktop? Let me know by typing in, in the comment box. I would love to hear from you. Alright, thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button and if you want to see more such videos in future, please subscribe to my channel XPS Tech. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.